Hey everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator. And in this video, I'm going to answer your questions about the Patio Slicer. Uh, when will the open beta end? And what will the price point be of this slicer? And of course, uh, what features will it have? And will that be better than all the free alternatives? I'm going to tell you this all in this video. Now, in the previous video, and if you haven't seen it, it's over there, I asked you guys some questions what you think about the open beta model that uh, Patio is having at this moment with their slicer. And I asked you guys, well, uh, do you like the open beta idea or do you like it uh, that the slicer will be a commercial product instead of a free product, which there are so many of right now at this moment? And uh, well, I got a lot of comments and uh, some comments were very positive and said, well, it should be have something to do with the tool changer thing that they are building at E3D. And some other were very negative and said, well, I'm not going to use the slicer as an open beta tester because I'm not willing to be beta testing for this company while they are going to get money for it uh, on a later stage. And well, I can... Uh, see that there are a lot of people thinking different things about the com company, E3D, uh, about Patio and about the slicer and how the beta testers are being used. And uh, well, it was fun to read all those comments, but one of those comments was coming from Gabriel Seltzer. And uh, he said, well, Brian, I'm working over at this company that runs the Patio slicer and uh, can, can I answer your questions? And uh, do you have questions for me that I can help you with? So I fired a lot of questions at him uh, and he answered every single one of them. So thank you very much, Gabriel Seltzer, for this. And uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, read my questions and give his answer to you guys so that you all know it. Now, my first question that I asked him was, on which market does this slicer have to position itself? Uh, and what should be the added value of this slicer compared to free slicers, like for example, Cura or Slicer? And he said, well, we're hoping to reach the high-end professional markets, such as people who print for a living or researchers and that kind of people. And we're also bring, uh, want to bring value to the typical enthusiast hobbyist. We also think that we got a smooth enough workflow and enough documentation that we are a good option for makers just starting out with 3D printing. We know that our feature set is a little bit limited when it comes to a fancier slicer settings, but I think you can see that our velocity of development is very fast for the current slicer market. For now, we think that our streamlined workflow makes slicing simple for easy prints and our model grouping tools make a more challenging printing a lot easier to set up and more intuitive. At the moment, we know that professional makers are probably not interested in a slicer that, that is an open beta though. So at this moment, uh, the slicer is open beta and we can all use it for free. Uh, as long as it is in open beta. Now, my next question was, well, what's the business plan for this slicer? What's the idea about it? And he said, well, we are not sure right now. We have been looking hard into a subscription model, which would probably put the monthly cost of using Patio at something like the cost of a Netflix subscription. And for the casual maker and probably more uh, bigger companies, it will cost a little bit more. So for the casual maker, it will be the price point for a Netflix subscription. For the bigger companies, it will probably cost more. So there is a pricing differentiation uh, in how you are going to use this slicer. I think of it like uh, how Fusion 360 works. Uh, there, the, the users who are using it uh, for teaching or uh, as a student or people who are using it at home, uh, they can use it for free, while the other people that are uh, really making profit of it have to pay for it. And uh, the, the Patio Slicer won't be for free, but it won't be uh, very expensive as well, as the price point will be something like a, a, a Netflix subscription model. Um, 
we are very conscious that we are competing with free slicers and we want to make sure that Patio provides a lot of uh, uh, value to the 3D printing world at large. So they know they are in a competitive market and that their slicer have to be better than all the other slicers uh, yeah, to, to compete with the other slicers. And he's going to dig deeper into it uh, at, at the further questions. Is this slicer part of a hardware project, uh, such as a tool changing hardware that you are making? Because E3D is working right now on a tool changing project uh, the, that 3D printers can change their, uh, for example, their print heads and swap it for another print head, so that you can work with a, for example, 0.8 layer height uh, nozzle and then switch that for a 0.2 layer, uh, layer height nozzle. And well, that's something that uh, that the tool changer uh, that a lot of people think this Patio slicer is made for. But his answer is surprising. Patio is Patio meant to provide a good slicer for use with the E3D tool changer and give us the flexibility to implement useful features for the tool changer. However, the E3D tool changer works with most slicers provided you set them up correctly. We are absolutely not locking the E3D tool changer to Patio. Remember also that Patio is a separate company from E3D. I didn't know this. Uh, I thought that the Patio slicer was made by the people of E3D and it was the same company. It's, uh, it, it's a separate company. It's not the E3D company that makes the Patio slicer, uh, although it are the same people. And uh, they're not locking their tool changing system to the Patio slicer, meaning that uh, it's not proprietary hardware software that has to be combined. Then I tell him that I'm a little bit worried about the whole idea of the beta tester uh, in the current situation, because uh, as a beta tester, you have to actually invest time and money uh, and, and, and products like filament, etc. Uh, and you don't know if you will reap the benefits from it. And there he says, we are offering the patio slicer for everyone to use for free during the open beta. The value of using the Patio Beta is, uh, is having access to a real good slicer. If people don't want to provide feedback about their experience with Patio, they are not required to, and can simply use it freely while we are in open beta. We only collect very minimal amounts of anonymous, analytical info from the Patio at the moment, and you can find all, all the uh, info about what we collect automatically in our privacy policy and he gives a link to that privacy policy as well. And you can find that on their website as well. So what he says here is that uh, those beta testers don't need to provide information back. He uh, specifies it later on on the next question though. Then he goes further with a statement and this statement is really something that answers the question even better because he says, we are looking to create a real great slicer that responds to community feedback in a way that no other slicer does at this moment. Obviously, to do that we need feedback from our users so that we can improve uh, in the most useful ways. Having a hand in the development of Patio is another reason why people want to, uh, may want to use the beta. So, if you are using the beta, you are really uh, involved in having a hand in what is going to be the, 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 the next uh, development in Patio, as long as you provide your feedback, of course, that is. Then as for monetary rewards, we are not sure if there will be any because we don't know what the eventually business, business model is going to be. It's certainly something we are considering and there is a discussion on this uh, in the community forum at the moment. So they have a community forum and uh, there is a, a, a discussion going on at this moment what will be done with the people who are really beta testing the slicer at this moment. But as they don't know what their business model is going to be, they don't know how they are going to reward people for it. Now. Then my question becomes, 
uh, everyone in the 3D printing world is now uh, on open source. We all like the idea of open source. And uh, while there are so many open source software packages already, and so many open source slicers already, what's the reason that uh, this company chose not to go for open source? And his answer is, is very interesting because he really tells what, what's going on at this moment. As we mentioned in our launch blog post, all of the serious competitors in the free and open source slicer market are maintained by printer manufacturers. And this is something which is completely true. Um, as it is at this moment, if you, for example, buy a Prusa printer and you get the Prusa edition of a slicer for free, then this slicer is already rich feature packed with all the things you have, to, uh, you, you, you need for this uh, printer. So therefore, uh, it's beneficial for Prusa to invest in that slicer. And uh, this is how this development of this slicer is being paid. So it's an open source slicer, but it's being paid by Prusa, for example, in this case, uh, because it's an added value to his printers. Now, that said, E3D doesn't provide any 3D printers and doesn't provide any hardware uh, that benefits from using their slicer. Therefore, uh, development of their slicer has to be funded from, from other income. And uh, well, they need to have an income to, to have their developers work on this software. So this is the reason why they, uh, they are asking money for it in the end. Uh, and why it's a commercial product and it's not an open source product. Um, and, and therefore, uh, I'm, I'm again asking, uh, would it be conceivable, for example, that combined hardware and software will be introduced that will uh, offer Octoprint-like options in combination with the Patio Slicer? So will there be hardware that will be bundled together with the Patio Slicer and uh, that, that bundle makes it profitable for them. And there is answer, right now we are not looking at selling any hardware as we feel that Octoprint and Duet electronic boards handle those cases pretty well. So, in fact, there is no hardware coming that will support their software. There is no uh, special need to have a bundle of hardware and software altogether. And therefore, they have to find another way of income for their slicer as well, those people who are uh, building it at the moment, they have to be paid, and this, this is something very normal. Now, then I go further into the beta tester question, and I ask him what the reason is that Pasia chooses to recruit beta testers uh, from the users of their software. And uh, there is a deeper going uh, thought about this. Th there are two kinds you can beta test software. One way is, uh, like for example, which is very normal in the gaming industry, uh, that uh, there is a paid product and uh, you can get early access to that product uh, if you become a beta tester. And therefore you gain early access, uh, you test the product and you give your final conclusion about it. Uh, they can improve the software and then when the software goes public to everyone, uh, then the, the software will be very good. Another way of beta testing is you create a software package, then you go to a company that is uh, specialized in beta testing and you ask them to test your software. They are going to test it, they are going to test it on bugs, on hardware failures, that, that kind of things. And then uh, you, can, you can correct your software and then go public. Now, the way the Patio Slicer uh, chooses to, to use the beta testers is like the way uh, the, the, the software developers for games do it. They use the users who are in the end going to use it as beta testers. So I ask him, well, what is the reason they do this? <coughs> and his answer is that uh, the kind of testing that uh, a company does for them is not the kind of testing we're looking for. Typically, those kinds of testers are paid to find bugs and problems with software. We are mostly looking for feedback about the tools that Patio provides for slicing. 
and whether or not they are valuable for our users. We need the feedback from real users to get a feel of what people want from a slicer and what they're not currently getting from the existing options uh, and how they would uh, like to be able to do things in a slicer. So they want the real users, they want the real people that are using slicers uh, to give them feedback so they can make it easier, uh, they can create more functionality, that kind of things. And they don't want to, to have beta testers to find bugs for them because they can find bugs themselves. No, they want the real users to, to tell what is uh, any feature in that slicer. Um, so <coughs> there is no problems for users that are not interested in giving their opinions as during the open beta, as we are still offering Patio for free during this time of development. So he says that if you're not interested in being a beta tester, if you're not interested in giving your opinion back to the developers, you don't have to. You can still use this slicer and, uh, well, not provide them with any information. And then my final question, and there he gives a lot of answers about this product. Uh, at what time will it be announced, what the slicer will cost, and what the possibilities will be? And there his answer is, we don't have any hard information for you about the end date for the open beta, nor our potential price point outside of the speculations I mentioned above. So they don't know when this slicer will be out of the open beta yet, uh, and there isn't a specific price point for it yet, uh, other than that they already mentioned that they are looking for a price point like a Netflix subscription. And then he says something really interesting. We expect to open beta to run for several more months and over that time we are expecting to surpass all the existing fields of free slicers in terms of functionality. So they are really working on uh, adding more functionality than you can get now from your free slicers with this patio slicer. So uh, in a few months, that's what's said here, in a few months there will be a slicer that will have a price point around the Netflix subscription model and uh, that slicer will, uh, will give you more benefits, more features than the uh, open slicers that are out there available at this moment. Uh, and then he ends with, there would be no point in charging for a product when there are better free alternatives, right? So he knows that there are good alternatives at this moment and he says, well, although there are good alternatives, Patio will be a better alternative than all those free alternatives. And uh, well, I think this is great news for us as users because although it isn't an open source project and although it is something that we have to go and pay for in, in the end, uh, if you want a more advanced slicer, there will be a more advanced slicer and Patio will be this more advanced slicer. So yeah, this wraps it up for uh, this episode. If you like this video and if you like the answers that Gabe Seltzer gave to me um, to, to give you the information on my channel, then please give this video a like up, a likes, uh, a thumbs up. A thumbs up in this case is also a thumbs up to Gabe Seltzer because he spent a lot of time in answering my questions. Uh, also, please subscribe to my channel because then you will be notified about uh, all the things that I do uh, on 3D printing and uh, well, all the information like this. So please subscribe to my channel as well. And well, if you want to fund my channel, uh, then you can find links in the description down below where you can find links to shops where you can shop and well, uh, there will be a little bit of income for me as well. Uh, or you can uh, donate some money for a cup of coffee. Thanks for watching and I will see you later guys. Bye bye.